Hello everyone, mabuhay! You're about to watch Research Lecture Series. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so that you will be notified with the upcoming series. You may also share the link to your students, classmates, or friends. Enjoy watching! This is a research spectrum that I developed which presents a snapshot of the entirety of this research lecture series. For Series 3, the main concepts found at the first tier or level, particularly cross-sectional and longitudinal research classifications located on the left ear, shall be discussed exclusively. Research Lecture Series 3 deals with cross-sectional and longitudinal researches. It presents the differences between the two classifications. It also provides the factors that may influence the selection between cross-sectional and longitudinal researches. Cross-sectional research is a type of investigation in which data are collected at a single point in time from a cohort or groups of individuals who share common attributes or experiences and entails lower cost and relatively short period. Comparisons can be inferred only within groups. It is not suitable to compare the changes of attributes of the subjects that have occurred over time since the data collection tool is limited only on the existing conditions or current affairs of the subjects. A common example is a descriptive research that includes an age profile of the respondents according to two generations. The study may be able to find differences on the frequency of use of social media among millennials, Gen X, baby boomers, and builders. On the other hand, longitudinal research is a type of investigation in which data are collected across time from a single set of participants and requires higher cost and longer time on successive periods with regular intervals. The study may last for a half year or several years. The long duration of investigation may result to attrition of subjects and compromises the authenticity of responses. A researcher, for instance, may gather data on the achievement test scores of grade 1 students and then gather similar information again when they are in grade 2 until grade 6. Comparisons of achievement test scores of the students may be conducted per grade level, increment, or as a whole. Factors that may influence research type selections First factor, budget allotment. Budget dictates whether a research is conducted either on a short or long-term basis. Practically, limited budget allocation may resort to conducting cross-sectional studies which are relatively inexpensive and quick to conduct according to Sal Kim. Its counterpart longitudinal studies are inexpensive of both time and money according to Sal Kim. Those with tight budget may tap agencies that sponsor research projects, especially those that entail high cost. In the Philippines, CHED provides assistance to students who are pursuing thesis or dissertations. DepEd also provides research grants to teachers under the Basic Education Research Fund or BERP program. Furthermore, DOST, DOH, NCCA, etc. bestow research grants to researchers with approved research proposals. Second factor, time element. 
time element is an essential consideration in the conduct of research. Many students, especially in the graduate level, fail to finish their thesis or dissertations on time. Ideally, the time requirement for many graduate schools is two semesters. There are also commissioned researchers who fail to submit research outputs as specified in their research proposals. As a result, students will not graduate and commissioned researchers are liable for damages depending on what is stimulated in their contracts. As such, they need to choose cautiously between longitudinal or cross-sectional research. In a cross-sectional research, data are collected from the participants at a single point in time or during a single relatively brief time period according to Johnson and Christensen. They are conducted at regular intervals with relatively equal one or several year gaps but those might vary from smaller to longer years, according to Salkin. Third factor, nature of the study. The nature of proposed research determines the length of time to be devoted for data collection. There are researches that are innately longitudinal even though they require immediate results. Intervention researches such as clinical trials are by nature longitudinal. By principle, Research need not sacrifice safety of the target recipients or beneficiaries. For instance, clinical trials for medicine or vaccine are considered most urgent in order to curtail, if not stop, the COVID disease and minimize the hazards it may cause to the populace such as remdesivir, Sputnik 5, and virgin coconut oil to cure or prevent COVID-19 Though such studies are urgent, a cross-sectional study is not feasible since clinical trials require at least long process of at least five phases, such as basic research, pilot research, efficacy trials, effectiveness of clinical trials, and effects on public health. On the other hand, there are studies that require short duration of data collection. A typical example is phenomenological research. The researcher needs to immediately capture the participants' perceptions, understandings, and beliefs concerning a particular situation or event. sense of urgency is indispensable because lengthening the time frame will affect the participants' accuracy of recall on the event being studied. Trends and Weaknesses of Cross-Sectional Studies Cross-Sectional Studies are quick and relatively simple and researchers can test many people of different ages at the same time. It may cover greater number of participants as long as they belong to the same cohort which allows comparisons across individuals. A disadvantage of cross-sectional research is the difficulty to establish time order as condition two of causal studies. Since the data are collected at a single time point, only it cannot measure changes that are occurring over time.
As such, cross-sectional studies do not provide much information about the ways individual change over time. Strengths and Weaknesses of Longitudinal Studies One strength of longitudinal research is its capability to collect information that allows comparisons across time in the same individual or group of individuals. The data collection within groups make it easier to maintain smaller number of participants as compared to conducting repeated measures using the same individuals or groups. Longitudinal studies are expensive of both time and money. Information from the participants may not be authentic because the response may be conditioned by the previous experience of taking part of the survey. Sample attrition is also inevitable which refers to the continued loss of respondents from the sample due to non-response at its wave of a longitudinal survey. That ends our research lecture series for today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon, and share the link to your students, classmates, and friends. Thank you for watching.